Okay, so I wanted to show you a few ways um, that you can use the Blur tool for the Ultimate Gizmo project. Um, the Blur menu, by the way, is under Filter, Blur. So there's a bunch of different types of blurs you can use. Um, you know, as for, your, as for how many times to use it in this project, I would say if you can use it two times uh, for the different features that you have in your project. So across all the features for your gizmo, maybe use the blur twice to demonstrate some sort of movement or glowing or something else. I'll show you in a second how to do those things. First things first, uh, one example of usage of the blur tool would be uh, to make something look like it's spinning. So in this case, I have a fan blade, which is um, just an image I got off the web. And I have the black background, which sort of looks like the, uh, the gizmo. Um, so basically, if you're going to do this kind of a spinning thing, you have to create it in a separate file where the thing you want spinning, in this case, the propeller blade, is completely centered in that document. And then once you get the effect the way you want it to be, you can, you can uh, bring those layers over it back into your template. So here's how you do the, uh, the, um, the spinning effect. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm going right over on top of the fan blade layer, holding down the Option key and clicking and dragging. So now I have a duplicate. And that duplicate I'm going to rotate by hitting Command T and rotating it slightly. So that's basically just the duplicate I just created rotating just a bit uh, behind the other one. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, radial blur. Now the radial blur it doesn't really give you a clear preview as you drag this slider but it shows you kind of down here uh, sort of what it's doing as far as uh, when you hit OK it's going to render the transformation but um, you can pick different ways that it's blurring. Um, in this case I want spin, quality, I'm going to go for best and I'm going to hit OK. It takes a few seconds to render it and there's my kind of spinning effect and you can even it's still a separate layer so you can still kind of rotate that around if you want to make it look like it's this kind of trail um, and that will then be brought into your other document so th the way you could do that is if you just take both these layers with the command key select them both merge them and then you can do command A command C and if you go back into the uh, this is a, another template file that I've already created, but you just literally paste it in there, and then you can kind of scale it down as needed. Um, so another way you could use a blur tool, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, is to make something look like it's kind of flipping out or in motion. So I have this fly swatter, and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Now, before, uh, when I just showed you the propeller blade, I used the option click and drag trick over here to duplicate the layer. But you can also do it right on top of the object. If you're on the Move tool and you're on the layer where that um, item that you want to duplicate is, you can literally Option, click, and drag. And then you can do Command T, rotate it, maybe move it over a little bit. And then you can blur this, filter blur. This time, instead of the radial blur, pick the motion blur. And it gives you the opportunity to kind of define a direction that it's blurring in. So this is, I guess, another example of using this. You might do it if there's a kind of a car speeding by. This would be a good effect to make, uh, make it look like the car is actually in motion. So then you can b bring it down below the other fly swatter. And then if you wanted to make another one that's kind of down here somewhere, you can literally option, click, and drag again, Command-T to rotate. And you can either blur it more, or you could simply lower the opacity. So it kind of gives that sort of caught in the, uh, you know, caught in the midst of a flip look. Kind of cool. Um, another way uh, to use the blur tool is with the, you could make like a glass sheen or something that looks like it's shining. So in this case, I have a mirror. I'm going to go to the lasso tool and I'm going to grab the lasso tool, the, or the, sorry, the original lasso tool, which just looks like a rodeo lasso. And I'm just going to draw, actually, first things first. I'm going to make a new layer with a little plus sign down here. I'm going to go a little blob. It doesn't have to be a perfect blob. Okay, and then we're going to fill that with white. Edit, fill. You can pick white from the contents window. Hit OK. Command D to deselect. It looks like I sort of spilled milk on the, on the mirror, but I'm going to add a blur, so it's going to give this kind of sheen to it. So under the filter menu, blur, 
And again, you could use the motion blur. That's a good usage of it. Um, and you can kind of pick which direction you want the, the motion to be happening in. But it gives this kind of sheen. And if some of the blur actually ends up outside of the mirror, you could always use the eraser tool to kind of trim it out a little bit on the layer that has the blur. So that's another good use of the blur tool. And then finally, I just wanted to show you um, when you're done with your gizmo, since the template itself is a dark template, um, you could give it this sort of slick reflective surface look to it, like the product is actually on a black kind of reflective mirror-ish surface. So this is my gizmo. So I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Again, I can just, I can either click and drag or I can, on the, on the uh, image, or I can just option click and drag on the layer down here. Make a duplicate. Command T. I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to say flip vertical, which gives it sort of like a mirror image. Okay. I'm going to bring it down here. It's not going to be a perfect mirror image, but it'll be close enough for what we're going to be about to do. So this is my duplicate that I just made, and I flipped it. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit with the opacity slider. So let's make it like 50 maybe. Cool. And then to use the blur tool, you can again use the the, uh, the motion blur is pretty cool for this. So filter, blur, motion blur. And in this case, I'm going to go kind of straight up and down with my little directional thing there. And maybe not quite as blurred. And there I have what kind of looks like a mirror reflection. It looks a little kind of slick. Um, and if you want to be really fancy, then you can go and do the layer mask trick, sort of like what we did with Star Wars back in the day when we faded the type. So I'm going to say hide all, grab my gradient tool, make sure that it's black and white here. And I'm going to just grab the linear gradient, which is the one we use for Star Wars. And you can kind of, whoops, sorry. You can give it that effect as if it's kind of fading away a little bit in the mirror. So a couple ways to use the blur tool, blur tool sorry, hopefully... Uh, some of these will work for you. And again, you only really have to use it for two of your features. So uh, that's it.